Hey everybody, it's Tony from Adafruit, and I wanted to do a live stream to demonstrate an interesting thing you can do with a Circuit Playground board. So Circuit Playground is our little all-in-one Arduino-compatible electronics learning platform, and it's a neat little board because it can act like a USB mouse or keyboard, just like the Arduino Leonardo or um, you know the Flora board, lots of ATmega 32U4 based boards. That's the processor on there. Uh, and that processor has a special USB stack, so it can act like certain USB devices. And it's exposed in the Arduino IDE, and it's really e easy to use. So I put together a neat demo where you can use the accelerometer on Circuit Playground, which detects uh, pretty much like the forces of movement or even gravity. And so using that, you can kind of tell how the board is tilted, like if it's leaning one way or leaning another way, then the force of gravity is gonna apply against it in a different way because gravity is always going down. So you can kind of detect how the board is tilted. And then using that, I can say, okay, if I'm tilted one way, I can move a mouse uh, that way. And if I tilt the other way, I can move it uh, the different way. And it happens, just so happens too, that we have two push buttons on the board that are just like left and right, uh, left and right mouse buttons. So it's easy to turn Circuit Playground into a physical mouse that you can use to move around your mouse just by tilting the board and pressing the buttons on there. Uh, so really cool little demo. And I put it together, I wasn't really sure what to expect, if it would be usable or not. And it is actually kind of usable. I'll show a few little examples of it. Uh, but let's just kind of dive in. So, you know, I'll show it, I'll demonstrate it, and then I'll kind of walk through the code and show you uh, how I created it and, you know, really the basics of how it works uh, for it. It's, it's surprisingly simple. It's really not too complex. So let's dive into the main view here and jump over here. Uh, and basically, so you can see in the upper right, uh, this is Circuit Playground board. And I'll put a link in the description below to the product page for Circuit Playground. You can check it out. Really nice little board. Uh, it's got all kinds of components and stuff soldered onto it. Uh, but the one important one we're using is right in the middle right here is the accelerometer. And so that's the chip that, get, that can detect the forces that are being applied to the board. So like if I'm shaking the board or moving it around, it can actually detect that and tell you, you know, here's the magnitude or the, uh, you know, what, what kind of forces are being applied. And it's a triple axis accelerometer, which means there are three different axes of, uh, uh, I guess, of orientation that it can detect. So there's an axis that goes left, right like that. There's one that goes kind of up and down like this, and another one that comes out of the screen, you know, towards you, like up towards the camera, so up and down. And so right now with the board just laying on the table, you know, remember gravity, it's always 9.8 meters per second squared, just straight down towards Earth. And so, uh, you know, if I could look at the readings on the board, and we'll look at those in a little bit, we should see that this axis that goes up and down would get a value of like 9.8 or negative 9.8, you know, because it's going down. And then the other axes, uh, when it's just standing still, shouldn't get any movement. But if I'm, you know, moving them around, then they're going to change. And if I tilt, for example, then, you know, now I'm holding the board in a different orientation. And so now that axis is maybe only halfway down. And so you get a slightly different value for that. So that's how it'll work. Uh, but then and also, so right here, I actually have the sketch uh, open. But first, let me just demo uh, how this works. So uh, this example, it's in the Circuit Playground library. So make sure to update, because I literally just committed it to GitHub. So it's going to take like a day for the Arduino library manager to pull it down. But uh, if, you up down the, uh, if you update the Adafruit Circuit Playground library, so if I go into examples, it's the Adafruit Circuit Playground library. So this is kind of the main library we use for Circuit Playground that has all the uh, drivers and things for all the components. But there's an Excel mouse demo now, and that's what I have open here. So if you load this up and then uh, uh, send it to your Circuit Playground, like program your Circuit Playground with it, uh, then it's ready to go. Now the way it works, the slide switch down here, when it's in the negative position or to the right as I'm holding it like this, because I have the USB uh, jack connected uh, at the top. And the way this works, you do need to hold the board just just like I'm holding it here where the USB jack is at the top uh, because it does need to know like you know which is the left button and the right button and how you should move the uh, board around to, to move your mouse so you want to hold it like this and, and you do have to plug it into your computer uh, you know because it acts like a USB device so it has to have a USB connection to your computer for this to work 
Uh, but then, so if you hold that and then the, the slide switch down here, if it's in the left position, there's a negative symbol, then it's not gonna do anything. It's not acting like a mouse. So I have my normal mouse uh, plugged in also right here and you can kind of see I'm moving around the Arduino IDE here. But if I slide the switch to the right, then let's see what happens. So you can kind of see the mouse cursor is drifting around a little bit. And if I tilt the board, notice it goes flying off the screen. If I tilt the board the other way, if I go up and down, then it kind of goes up and down. And if I hold it pretty still, then I can kind of keep it in one spot, like I'm holding it like this. But if I want, I can tilt it up. And then the mouse, uh, the buttons do work. So if I go up to like the menus up here, then I can open up the file. So I'm just pressing the left mouse button and holding, or the left circuit playground button and holding it down. And it's acting like I'm left clicking the mouse. So I can say, you know, let's go to examples. And it is a little tough. It takes a little bit of time to, to get used to this. And we, I can show you, you can actually tweak the sensitivity of this, but it is possible to use this as a, as a mouse. You know, I'm just literally holding circuit playground and just slowly kind of moving it around. So we can open up the button example here, for example, and, you know, play around with this. Or if I want, I can, probably get up here and close it if I just slowly kind of move it around. So there we go, so close that. So that's cool. And then uh, I, I did, I, I wanted to put in this slide switch functionality because at some point you're probably like, okay, I'm done using this as a mouse. So slide the switch over and then it stops moving around. You see, I've just got my normal mouse uh, control of this uh, board. So that's basically all it does. It's just a, an accelerometer mouse demo, but really cool kind of interactive way, you know, just using this, you, you, you intuitively, your body kind of has this feedback loop where you see the mouse moving and you see it's moving too fast. So you naturally just move it in the other direction to kind of slow it down a little bit. And it works surprisingly well, um, you know, it is, it is usable. And then maybe a real quick little demo that I thought would be kind of cool. Uh, something fun to do would be to play a game with this. Uh, and, you know, you, you're probably not going to play like an action game, like a shooter, although you could. You could probably play like Doom or something with this if you really wanted. Uh, but I was thinking a fun game would be like either Kaboom or Arkanoid or Breakout. You know, some of those classic arcade games that used like a spinner control, which is really just one axis. So it was like a little knob that you would spin left or right. And if you're thinking, you know, like a mouse, you know, you, you can emulate that just moving it left and right. But with this board, I can emulate it just by like tilting it left and right. So I'll show you, this is just a little web game. I'll put a link below. Um, I think they kind of ripped off uh, Kaboom. Kaboom is a classic from the 2600, Atari 2600. And it used the paddle controller, which again is like a little knob that has one axis of movement. So it works really well with this, you know, my X axis, the left, right axis. If I tilt the board left and right, that's how I play, uh, how I can play the game. And I'll show you real quick uh, when you play the game. So now I'm just using my normal mouse here. I'm not using Circuit Playground. But basically you click the mouse and you need to pick up all the bombs. So it drops these bombs and you pick them up and it looks kind of dumb and, and you know, it's it, like, it's not that interesting, but it gets really fast, really quickly. And uh, high level Kaboom players are pretty darn impressive to watch. But hey, let's turn on Circuit Playground mouse and let's try and play it a little bit and see. So, so I just turned it on. Now, one annoying thing is if I move the mouse too far and I go outside of the game, it kind of stops playing. So I need to kind of keep the mouse inside of here. But you see, I'm not using my mouse right now. I'm just using Circuit Playground. I'll see if I can get it more in the camera, which I kind of have to hold my arm here in a kind of weird spot. But, you know, as I slowly, there we go. So we're kind of in here. And so I want to keep it in here. Now I need to press the left button to start and it's a little hard to get my finger there, but okay, there we go. So, okay, starting out easy. I, I can kind of do this. There we go. Okay, hey, I passed the level. That's actually further than I've gotten yet using the mouse control. So, all right, we'll press the button again or using the accelerometer control. Oh no, ah, oh, hey, hey ah, I missed it. Oh, the mouse went out of there. So, but you can see that's actually fun and it's usable. Uh, and it does work, so it's uh, it's acting as a mouse and it's reading the tilting and the movement uh, of the Circuit Playground board for this. So, okay, so let's just kind of dive in and I'll go through real quickly, um, you know, how I created this and how it works uh, effectively. So maybe just to start, before I dive into the code for it, let's just do a really simple little sketch here to uh, just output one of the axes of the acceleration uh, data. So maybe like the x-axis of acceleration. So I'll just include the uh, Adafruit, oops, pound include, the Adafruit circuit playground.h. This includes the circuit playground library. Uh, and then you also have to do, when you use that in your setup, you have to do circuit playground.begin. That just does some initialization, checks that it can talk to the accelerometer, that type of stuff. And then let's also initialize the serial port. So we'll do serial.begin at 11.5200 baud. Uh, and then in my main loop, so let's just get the x-axis acceleration value here. And the way you do that, uh, there's a function that we have. 
and I forget what it is, so I'll scroll down in my main sketch here and let's just see. So it is motion X. So if I call motion X, it's gonna give me a floating point value and it's in meters per second squared, which is kind of the standard unit for acceleration. Uh, so I'll grab that and then let's just print it out. So we'll say serial print line X and this is a floating point value, so I can tell Arduino how many decimal points that I want. So let's just say three decimal points of precision. Uh, and then uh, let's just delay for um, uh, about 10 milliseconds. So quick little delay. Uh, this is gonna blast a bunch of data, but we can use the little serial plotter feature to just render this in a nice graph. So, okay, so we hit compile and it wants me to save. And we'll just say uh, test X Excel. How about that? And then, okay, uh, oh, spurious GitHub folder. That's cute. Uh, little warnings you get sometimes from time to time. That doesn't hurt, it's just a warning. So, uh, okay, now let's upload it to the board. So I've got Circuit Playground and then the port here I need to select. And then we'll hit the uh, upload here and it's gonna take a second and then it's uploading the board. So, okay, cool. So just uploaded. Now let's just open up the serial monitor and uh, it's 11.5, 200 baud. So you can see values are kind of flying in here. Let's uh, open up the serial plotter instead. So this is kind of nice, very cool feature in Arduino IDE. So this is basically just graphing that single number uh, that we had. So, okay, so I'm gonna pick up the board and you see a little bit of noise, you know, as I pick it up, remember the accelerometer is measuring the forces. So if I shake the board a lot like this, then you can see like, whoa, there's a lot of force. Now I'm only showing one axis and that's the X axis, which I believe, and on the board you can see, it's kind of printed on the silk screen, there's an X, so it says X is going this way. Uh, so if I move the board a little bit, and actually, yeah, it's actually this axis is the X axis, you can kind of see the values going down. So it's going towards like negative, you know, this is negative eight right here. So I'm holding the board like pretty much straight up. So the X axis is facing down. And if you look like negative eight, so this is around negative nine, maybe negative 10. That's pretty close to negative 9.8, which is 9.8 meters per second squared straight down. So that's basically telling me there's a force straight down, uh, you know, kind of where you're looking at the camera right here of 9.8 meters per second, which, hey, that's gravity. So that's kind of cool. So I know if I'm reading a value of negative 9.8 from my x-axis, then the board must be in this type of position. Now it might be like tilted this way or tilted this way, but it's at least facing straight up and down. And so that's pretty powerful. And let's see what happens, you know, if I go back and just hold the board kind of steady like this, then my x-axis, you know, look at this, it's right around zero because, you know, there's no force being applied to that x-axis that's kind of pointing this way. And if I flip the board the other way like this, so now it's straight up and down, but in the opposite direction, now I'm reading around, you know, 9.8, a positive 9.8. So I'm reading gravity, but it's just flipped around. So I know the board is, you know, flipped the other direction. And, it, and you can see if I like slowly tilt it, you know, now it's kind of halfway, uh, now it's somewhere around like eight meters per second squared and I keep tilting and we go down further to like six or five meters per second squared. And it's a pretty linear relationship. And you know, I can go all the way down to zero here. And that means, you know, I'm holding the board straight and I can keep tilting down a little more. And now it's like negative five meters per second and keep going and you know, negative seven. So very nice, you know, it's a linear relationship. Um, it's, it's easy to tell just based on, you know, am I, straight up and down this way or am I straight up and down this way just looking at you know how where am I between negative 9.8 and positive 9.8 meters per second uh, squared you know the, the acceleration there so that's powerful you know if, if I can get that value that ranges from negative 9.8 to positive 9.8 I could map that value to another range so I could say you know how about I take that x-axis that points up and down and I turn that into my mouse Y axis movement because on your computer screen, the up down axis, like my mouse is moving right here, is actually usually your Y axis. So you have to flip the axes on the board here. Uh, but that's powerful. You know, I can say, okay, if I'm tilted, you know, negative 9.8, uh, I'm holding the board straight up and down, you know, almost imagine like you were balancing something on the board, like that thing's just gonna fall off. There's nothing underneath it holding it there. So maybe that means I should like shoot the mouse down, you know, move the mouse really quickly uh, down, like give it a, a high velocity. And if I flip the board the other way, then, you know, maybe I should move the, the mouse in the opposite direction at a high velocity. Uh, so I can really just directly take the axis value 
and change it to a different range. So instead of, you know, negative 9.8 to 9.8 pixels per second or something, you know, I, I maybe want to map that to like negative 25 to positive 25 pixels per second, you know, some kind of velocity or movement of the mouse uh, for that. And that's something that we can tweak because that'll change the speed or the sensitivity of this. Uh, and the exact same thing applies to the other axis, so the Y axis. Uh, and then I guess just real quickly, we might as well just print this out. So how about let's change from X, we'll do motion Y. So we'll print out the Y axis value here. And you'll see it uh, should be really similar. It's just, I'm gonna have to tilt the board a different way to see different values here. So we'll upload this sketch and then, uh, okay, so it's done uploading, there we go. And then let's open the serial plotter and we should see, okay, so now this is reading the other axis. So, you know, if I, if I hold the board like up and down like I did before, look, you know, it's it's hovering around zero because I'm looking at a different axis. But now what happens, let, watch if I hold the board like this and if I tilt a little bit, you know, hey, we're jumping up to around like seven or eight or so meters per second. And if I hold it straight up and down, then, you know, it looks like we're around negative or positive 9.8. And if I flip the board completely over, then of course we expect around negative 9.8. And it's a pretty linear relationship uh, in between there. So, you know, I kind of go halfway. And then if I hold it straight up and down like that, we're gonna hover around zero or so. So again, really powerful, really uh, easy. I wouldn't say easy because you know it does take a little bit of thought to kind of figure this out and understand it. Uh, but it's it's not as complex as you might think. You know, you don't have to like figure out okay what is the exact position of this thing in in space and how has it moved or whatever. It's really just look at how gravity is being applied to the board and use that to figure out some basic orientation and map that directly to the speed of your mouse movement um, in here. So let's just run through the code for this sketch and I'll show you um, exactly how I do that. And it's it's really, it's pretty straightforward and a good example of uh, linear interpolation, which is something I've talked about before. Uh, it's maybe, probably one of my most favorite algorithms just because I use it so much. It's very, very handy. Uh, okay, so in the example, you know, you load it up. The first thing that you do, of course, you have to include your library's circuit playground library. That's the one I was just using. And then the mouse.h, this is Arduino's mouse and keyboard library. And this is the documentation on it. I'll put a link in the description below. Super handy, like they did a great job building a very simple class. Um, you know, you can basically use a mouse, make your board look like a mouse, and you can call like a click function when you want it to click or a move function when you want to move the mouse in a certain direction. Uh, same exact thing for keyboard. So if you want to like make keyboard presses and stuff, and maybe that's a future video we could do, like you could set up, you know, capacitive touch or something, keyboard presses if you wanted. Uh, but anyways, uh, that's what we use. So the mouse stuff is very easy, built into Arduino. Now I put some configuration at the top. I like to do this in a lot of sketches as defined values. And this is how I set up that linear interpolation that I kind of hinted at. So like I said before, I need to take the range of mouse acceleration values, like my x-axis acceleration, and map that into a range of mouse velocity values. And so that's what my xxl min and xxl max help define. So these are my accelerometer min and max values, so that if I'm getting a value of 0.1 or less from my accelerometer, then I'm basically saying, okay, that's my minimum mouse movement, which is zero. So like, you know, don't move the mouse at all in this case. And then if I get a, a value of 8.0 or above, then I'm saying, okay, you know, you've tilted your board pretty much almost to an extreme. So now move the mouse as fast as possible. And then anywhere in between this range of 0.1 to 8.0, it will just figure out the linear relationship between, you know, how far are you in between that range? Like if you're halfway in, in between that range, which would be like, you know, 4.05 or so, then uh, move your mouse at half its speed. And, and the way the speed is defined is with this X mouse range defined. And so this says basically your maximum velocity. So your range of velocity is gonna go from zero. And so I don't have like a min and a max range. I just assume zero is your uh, minimum velocity and zero just means no movement in that axis. And then this X range is kind of your maximum value. So, uh, you know, if I've tilted the board all the way to a, a maximum extreme, then it's gonna be moving the mouse at 25 pixels per uh, kind of interval of mouse movement, which you'll see later below is like every 10 milliseconds or so. Uh, so that kind of helps define the speed of the mouse movement for this. Now you might be wondering because, you know, we saw the values range from negative 9.8 to positive 9.8, but my min value here is positive. It, I don't have like a negative 8, uh, negative, you know, 8.0 to negative 0.1 or something like that. 
And I'll show you that what I do in the code, I actually take the absolute value of my uh, accelerometer, which means if it's a negative value, it turns it into a positive value because I really just care about the magnitude of the acceleration. And so the magnitude is just the, the size of it or the distance. It doesn't really care about if it's positive or negative, you know, so it's gonna be negative one way and positive the other way if I hold the board. Uh, you know, as far as computing the mouse speed, that positive and negative just determines if I'm moving the mouse left or right or up or down, you know, just which direction I'm going. So I can actually do that later in my code. So to simplify the linear interpolation, I basically, I take the absolute value, I look at the magnitude of that acceleration in, the, in one axis direction, and then I map that into the speed of mouse movement. And then later I can check and see, okay, was my acceleration positive or negative? And then I can flip my, uh, my mouse movement, you know, I can either negate it if I wanna move it, you know, in the opposite direction or keep it as a positive value if I wanna move it uh, forward or, or kind of in a positive direction. So that's, that's what you'll see later in the code. And then this X mouse scale, this is just a number that I multiply my X movement, my mouse movement by. And I did this because it's a really easy way if you want to flip the direction of movement so that like, you know, if I tilt the board up, naturally you think your mouse should probably move up. But if I tilt the board up and I want the mouse to move down because, you know, maybe I'm holding the board in the opposite orientation like this, then I can actually just change this scale value to negative one. So it makes it easy. Um, you know, this could have been like a Boolean, but then I've got to have a little if statement somewhere. So uh, this is a pretty standard thing in mathematics. You know, you've got an equation and generally you might want to have some scaling applied to it. So one basically means it's not going to change the value. It's not going to speed it up or slow it down. And this actually can be a floating point value. You know, you could put out like 0 0.5 in here if you wanted. So like really I just care, you know, one just means don't change the value. Negative one means invert it, so flip it. Uh, if it goes, you know, right, then actually move it left or vice versa. Uh, and then if you wanted, you could say like 0 0.5. And so that would just slow down the movement a little bit, which maybe doesn't make sense because if you want to slow it down, you could just change this X range, you know, cut this in half to like 14 or something like that. And that's going to make it, the mouse move a little bit slower. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit of maybe a potentially confusing knob uh, that you can have to tweak the values here. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of like this and you'll see it simplifies the code a little bit to do it this way. Uh, now the Y axis, I have the exact same configuration here. And in fact, I just use for my Y axis min and max, I just copy out the XXL. I just reference them with the same defined value. Same thing for the range, which I think makes sense because, you know, it, like if you want, you could put custom values here. Like if I wanted this to go from 0 0.2 to, you know, maybe 9.8. So you really have to tilt it all the way over to move it fast. I could do that. Um, but I wanted to keep the same values because, you know, naturally your body, you probably expect, you know, if I tilt a teeny bit this direction and I see the mouse moving a little bit, then if I tilt it a little bit in the other axis, I expect the mouse to move, you know, in that axis. But hey, if you want to tweak it and play with it, you can totally do that here and, you know, maybe have a mouse that's really fast left and right, but really slow up and down. And that would be good for like maybe a 3D shooter game where you want to move your character really fast side to side, but not necessarily up and down. Uh, for the movement. So you've got a lot of ways to tweak this. And again, the same scale value if you want to invert the axes or in invert how the movement of that axis works, you can do that. And then I have one final define flip axes. And this just means which axis, uh, you know, the X axis or the Y axis maps to the mouse X and Y axis. And naturally, when you hold the board like this with the cable facing upwards, it turns out you want to flip the axes so that the accelerometer x-axis maps to the mouse y-axis, the up-down axis, and then the accelerometer y-axis maps to the mouse x-axis, which is your left-right axis here. Uh, but you could flip these around, uh, which just means that you'd have to hold the board probably sideways like this uh, to make it work. So, you know, it's just another thing to play with uh, with the code here and try out different things. So, okay, the next thing I define the LERP function, linear interpolation. Uh, I call it LERP because I remember way back in the day when I was taking all these graphics classes, there are lots of different ways of interpolation. There's like bicubic interpolation. Um, you know, interpolation is just taking a value within one range and mapping it to a value in another range. And it's called linear because there's a linear relationship so that, you know, if the value in one range increases by a certain uh, constant, it's gonna increase by a similar proportional constant in the other range. 
Uh, but that's not always how you do interpolation. Like you could have a cubic interpolation where maybe a small increase in your input range turns into like an exponential increase in your output. And uh, the best way to kind of think about interpolation is, you know, look at Wikipedia. They have a great article here that talks about it, and that's actually where I just grabbed the equation for it. This is kind of the general equation for uh, linear interpolation right here. Uh, and it, it gives you a little more intuitive kind of sense of it so that, you know, this is kind of showing that uh, it can map movement in the x-axis here to movement in the y-axis in this plot. And it shows, you know, this is a linear relationship because this is a straight line. You know, there's just a constant slope between these. Uh, something like cubic interpolation, this wouldn't be a straight line. This could be like an exponential increase, you know, or there's bicubic, or there's all kinds of different types of interpolation here, uh, which which are useful in different contexts. But, you know, because we, as we saw, the, uh, the x-axis and the y-axis accelerometer values seem to have a linear relationship between, you know, just holding them straight up and down and then, you know, the other way there. So in that case, I can, I can use linear interpolation and we're all good here. Uh, so this helps kind of explain it. And this function is literally like this line right here is exactly this equation right here, just, uh, you know, spelled out in uh, C code. And then I, I put in a little range check up here where if my input value, so the parameters is function, it takes in x, and x0 and x1. So x0 and x1 are your minimum and maximum values for your input value x. So, you know, it's going to figure out where does this x fall within x0 and x1, so that min and max value. Uh, and then it's going to give you an output value y, so it's going to return a floating point value that's proportionally within the range y0 and y1. Um, and so that's what this equation does here. But I put in a little check so that if my input is less than my minimum input or greater than my maximum input, then just clamp the value to, um, uh, oh, actually, I've got a bug here. I, this should actually be uh, y0 and y1 here. Oh, that's cute. So basically, I'm just saying, you know, hey, if my x value is less than x0, I should actually just return my minimum y value here. Uh, and likewise, if it's greater than x1, if it's greater than my input range, I should uh, return my maximum uh, output value for that. So that's funny. I just noticed this bug. So this will probably change the behavior a little bit when I run this again. We'll, we'll see what happens for this. Uh, so, okay, I, I bet it's going to speed it up a lot because, uh, you know, if you noticed as I was holding it, like if I got to the maximum value, if I got past the maximum value, then it would uh, basically be returning my y, my x min and max, which up here are like 0 0.1 and 8.0. So let's see what happens. This is good. Um, it's, it's good to review your code. Uh, you know, this is something where code reviews are useful. You get another set of eyes to look at your code and you notice like, hey, uh, this is, uh, there's a problem here. And this is actually one style of code review when you don't have like two people. Um, I forget what it's called. It's like, um, I think duck, duck coding or something like that, where it started out like someone had a little toy duck. And the way it works is you explain your code to the duck. You just walk through your, like I'm doing here, but I'm explaining it to the internet. You walk through your code line by line and you just explain to that toy. You talk through it and say, hey, this is what this does. And you might find bugs like I just found right here. So, uh, you know, again, uh, handy, useful to uh, you learn lots of things uh, as you go through your code. So, okay, that's what linear interpolation does. Uh, and then in my setup, uh, very simple. I initialize circuit playground library, initialize the mouse library. You know, you have to call the begin functions. And then the main loops, this is where we get into the code. So uh, basically I do a little check here to see is the slide switch switched on? And in our circuit playground library, we have a great little slide switch function. This just returns a true false. It's true if it's on the left, uh, how the board is oriented this way, or if it's on the plus or the positive symbol. And it's false if it's negative, if it's on the minus symbol. And if so basically this is saying if it's not true, if it's negative, if I've slid the switch over into the negative position, then just return. So just stop processing. Don't go on and do the rest of this loop function. Just go back to the start of the loop. And as long as that slide switch is on the negative position, it's just going to be stuck going through this little return here, which is what I want because I want, it, you know, if you'd slide the switch over to the left or to the right position and turn it off, I don't want it to be moving the mouse. So it's kind of a safety thing where like, you know, the mouse starts acting wild, you flip it off and turn off uh, the, the mouse movement and you can kind of regain control of it uh, for this. But if it is uh, switched on to the left, then this is going to evaluate to uh, true uh, or to false, and it's you know just going to pass over this if statement. Uh, so the next thing I do is I take an initial reading of my left and right push buttons, 
And so I do that because the way I like to detect when the buttons have been pressed or released is take one reading, wait a little while, take a second reading, and then look and see, did the button change in between those two readings? And so I do my initial reading kind of at the start of my function, so I can do a bunch of other things that might take some time. And then you'll see later on, I do a second reading to see how these changed. Uh, okay, so now we get into the meat of how we actually read the acceleration values and map them to mouse values. So I read uh, the X and Y axis acceleration values, uh, which is just using that motion X and motion Y function. And then here's where I said, where I take the absolute value. So I wanna look at the magnitude. I don't care about the direction of the acceleration just yet. You know, I'm just saying, you know, if you're negative, turn into a positive value. Uh, and so that's how I get the magnitude. And then I get my mouse movement, my mouse velocity, by just using that linear interpolation function. And so you can see, I pass in my x-axis magnitude, my, I pass in my limits, my minimum and my maximum values, and then I pass in the values of my uh, output uh, range. So you know, I, I assume that I'm always, my lowest mouse movement value is zero, which means no movement, and then my fastest max, uh, mouse movement value is one I defined above, which is 25 uh, pixels per second, not pixel per second, but pixels per time unit uh, here, which is like uh, once every 10 milliseconds. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here. You know, I just get the magnitude, do the linear interpolation. Then with this value, we're pretty close to just piping that directly into mouse movement. You know, the next little if block is where I, now I check and see, okay, was my x-axis acceleration negative? Was it below zero? In which case, invert it, you know, uh, like multiply by negative one. So if it's a positive value, turn it into a negative value, basically. Uh, so that's what I'm doing there. Uh, and then here is where I apply that global scaling, so that X mouse scale. So I'm just doing a multiplication here. Uh, and so that's where if I had set this to a negative one, it would flip it, so it would move in the other direction here. Or if I had set it to like a floating point value, it could slow it down or speed it up if I wanted. And then I'm using the floor function because you know your mouse only moves in integer values because it's moving based on the pixels. So it's going to move, you know, like 10 pixels or five pixels or you know two pixels or three pixels. It doesn't have a sense of like move 3.728591 pixels. You know that doesn't mean anything to a mouse. So floor just says if I've got any decimal parts. Uh, because I will, this linear interpolation, it's on a floating point value. Uh, like Arduino has built in, I've shown off the map function, which does exactly this equation, but it only does it on integer values. And because my acceleration is a, a real value, like it goes, you know, it, it, it doesn't have just integer values. I, I could get negative 9.8 or I could get negative 9.76251, and you know, that's slightly different than negative 9.8. So I want to operate on floating point values, so I get as precise a mouse movement uh, as possible here. That, that's why I implemented my own linear interpolation function here. Uh, but the floor basically says, okay, at some point I have to just dump all that decimal stuff and get a integer value. And so floor just drops the value, uh, any decimal value. So if it's 3.7, I'm actually gonna get three uh, inside of here. And you could round if you wanted here, that would be fine. But I'm just using floor uh, because it's kind of a, a typical thing you use when you deal with integer values. Uh, the next thing is now I actually call the mouse move function. So this is a function Arduino provides, and I'm just passing it my X mouse and my Y mouse values that I computed above in these steps here. Uh, and I have this inside of an if statement because remember I had that flip axes define. So if that's true, then this bottom one gets run where it's gonna say, okay, mouse move takes in your X and then your Y mouse movement. And then this third one is your mouse wheel, which I'm not using here, but that could be an interesting thing. Like maybe there's there's another axis I'm not using, the Z axis, which is kind of your up-down axis, which that could be really funky to try and map that to mouse, uh, mouse wheel movement. But you know, maybe you wanted to tweak this and tilting the mouse up down would move your mouse wheel, for example. You could totally do that just by changing what, uh, what axis values you send in here. But that's all that this block is doing. You know, I'm just looking to see if I if I have that flip axis defined, and you can see these lines are exactly the same. They're just swapping around. You know, in this top one, I send my x accelerometer mouse movement into my x mouse movement value, and similar for my y. Versus when it's swapped, I just take my y value and send that into x, and vice versa. Then a small little delay. So little delay because I don't want this to run so fast that it's just like, woo, my mouse is just flying around everywhere. You know, 10 milliseconds is still pretty quick. Um, you know, that, that's uh, 100 times a second. 
but it's uh you know it, it gives a little bit of time uh so that again your, your body kind of needs this little feedback loop where if things happen too quickly your brain's not going to process it you know things are going to happen too fast uh, and conveniently this also gives me some time to wait for button presses to change so then right after this i grab a second reading of my button state so i just read in, you know are they pressed or not and then the next blocks are just checking to see are my buttons pressed or not and so the way i do that i look at my first mouse read my first button reading and my second button reading and the way circuit playground is built the left button function and the right button function if the button is pressed they return true and if the button is not pressed they return false so basically i'm saying if my first reading is not pressed you know if it's false and my second reading is pressed if it's true then i know that uh you press the button at some point you know that signal changed from low to high and similar with this check down here if my initial reading is is pressed if it's true and if my second reading is false if it's not pressed then you must have let go of the button and luckily arduino has the little mouse press and mouse release function and you just tell it they have constants for which mouse button you want so i do the exact same logic for the left and right mouse buttons here i'm just checking to see you know when that button signal changes from low to high or high to low uh, inside of here and that's it it just goes back and runs the loop again and, and applies it so let's save this let's reload it because i made that little bug fix so let's see this is probably going to speed up the mouse quite a bit and so uh, i'll show you how we can change like these range values to slow it down or speed it up uh and kind of how they work so okay that compiled and then i've got the board so let's do an upload to the board and then let's see how this works and, and again remember um i have to slide the switch over in the left position to turn the mouse on so okay there we go it's flashing the board and okay so it's flashed and now let's see what happens i'm going to press this and okay hey so it's working and yeah it does seem a little bit faster so you can kind of see like as i'm moving this uh and let me see if i can get this in the camera a little more so there we go so you can kind of see so like if i you know tilt it down a little bit i can stop it yeah this feels a lot more natural before that bug was kind of slowing it down but this makes it a lot easier i think so hey it's good to review your code uh even with the internet that that should be a new style of code review you know the internet code review where you just turn on a camera and just start talking to the internet walk through your code uh they, i'm sure you find some bugs and things so okay cool so let's let's try to play kaboom with this then real quick so i'll turn it off we'll go to the web page here and let's uh let's go back here okay uh, let's see i'm almost dead i'm gonna use my normal mouse here all right so let's start over the game yeah, yeah yeah high scores come on i just want to play there we go okay so i'm gonna turn off or i'm gonna remove my hand from the mouse turn on circuit playground there we go so okay that's good now i need to press the left mouse button to start it off and uh, i should probably start near the guy so that yeah as he drops the bomb i can get them there we go there we go hey look at that hey got past the first level all right let's see what happens next and it gets it gets pretty challenging here as you go ah lost one there so this is fun though this is this is a great game uh i love these old 2600 games because they they look great uh you know i was a little too old for the 2600 I, I remember i had some older cousins that had one uh my first system was nintendo the nes but uh it, i remember some of these games from back in the day and, the, and they were fun and they're still fun today because they're simple like you don't have to run through a tutorial mode and like have your hand held it's like you turn it on you start using the joystick and you're ready to go it's a little bit different than games today so that, that's a rant for another day uh but that's it so i think i'm going to wrap up this stream then uh folks have questions throw them into the chat and like i said uh i'm gonna have to make this bug fix and push out a new uh, version of the library but uh check tomorrow and the arduino library manager should be updated and you can pull down this example and start playing with it i, I guess actually here let's before I, I go and and throw questions in the chat while i'm doing this but let's see what happens i'm going to change this x range value a little bit so let's increase it a lot let's make it 100 and let's see what happens here so this should speed the mouse up quite a bit uh and so we should kind of see like it might it might go a little wild so we'll uh, compile it and then let's upload it to the board and let's see we'll give oh actually i, I might need to reselect uh circuit playground because it it changes the name of the board oh no it looks like it's figuring it out so we'll give it a second here oh no no this is going to fail this is the only annoying thing when it when it acts as a mouse uh the name of the device changes so now it's this hid g1 this is an os 10 thing because now it's a human input device it's not like a usb serial device so i need to reselect the the board up here and now when i press upload it should work for this so we'll give it a second here it's got to recompile and then push it up but let's see what happens you know this should make things go a lot faster 
uh, with the mouse. So, okay, so it's not enabled yet. So here's my cursor. It's kind of in the center of the screen. And I'm going to turn it on and we'll see what happens. And, whoa, oh yeah, this thing's a lot faster. So, you know, I'm just kind of nudging it and it's uh, it's moving around uh, quite a bit. But you know, it, again, your body gets into like a feedback loop, just moving it around a little bit you start to naturally feel like, okay, I need to just kind of cup it in my hand very gently and I can hold it here. And if I want to fly over there and if I want to fly back and go all around, you know, it, it works. So like you can increase the speed just by changing that sensitivity value there. So, you know, something really cool, it's worth messing with. You know, I think in the library, I'm gonna keep it a lower value like 25, just so that it's easier to start with, but play with that, see how it works. And you can also change these X Excel min and max values here. Now, I could change my min to zero, which means I have to hold this thing perfectly steady, you know, exactly at zero with no force applied at all in order to stop the mouse moving, which I thought about and is probably not a smart idea because, you know, naturally your hand's going to shake a little bit. So that's why I did it at 0 0.0 or 0 0.1 because I want to give a little bit of a dead zone where it's like, yeah, if you're shaking a little bit and giving a little bit of force, it's not going to make your mouse go crazy. So that's why I did this at a value of 0.1. And similarly for 8.0 because you know, I could make this 9.8, which means you have to hold it exactly straight up and down to uh, to get it to move as fast as possible. But I wanted to give a little bit of leeway. But play with changing those values. You know, increase them, decrease them. See how it, how it changes uh, the behavior. Because again, it's just changing how that linear interpolation works. It just changes that input range, which is going to change your output values a little bit for this. Uh, so, okay. So let's see. We'll jump in real quick and see if there are any questions. Uh, let me change back to the main view so we'll go back to that and okay so let's see uh, bu, bu, bu. uh, so, uh someone was be uh, prepared to be impressed if i could play a game with circuit playground yeah like i said uh you know i think it could work for a shooter like doom or something if um if you slow down like the y axis the up down axis but then maybe increase you know because imagine when you play like shooters on a game pad um, with analog sticks. Usually your left-right movement, you want really high sensitivity and then up down a little bit slower sensitivity so that you're not like always craning your head up and down. Uh, I think it could work. It's worth a shot at least to see if it work. Uh, so there's that. Um, let's see. Uh, is the SCLSDA pair of pads for reading external sensors uh, or the output lines for the onboard sensors. Uh, so the, they're basically the I2C bus on the board. So yeah, the Circuit Playground board, it has your SCL, which is your I2C clock line, and SDA, which is your I2C data line. So you can read any I2C sensors on here, which if I remember correctly, we don't have any I2C sensors on Circuit Playground. The accelerometer is actually being used in spy mode. Um, so there's really nothing you can read on the board, uh, but you could, if you hooked up, yeah, like a temperature sensor, uh, you could hook up, you know, maybe a fancier accelerometer, like one, uh, you know, like the BNO055 that does like absolute orientation or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's I squared C bus. Uh, and if, if you don't use I squared C devices, they can act just as digital inputs and outputs. So you can, you know, just use them. You can light neopixels and stuff like that with them. So they're good to use. Um, and let's see. Uh, oh, someone's wondering, it'd be cool to have neopixels display the magnitude and direction of the uh, LEDs, of the acceleration on the LEDs. And yeah, that's a good example. And again, you could use linear interpolation. You can just say, you know, map your x-axis or y-axis acceleration into maybe the number of pixels to light up, you know, from like 0 to 10 pixels or something like that. Uh, or maybe color values like 0 to 255 red color, something like that. So again, that linear interpolation, very powerful function. Uh, you know, I use it all the time. It, it is a favorite equation of mine. Um, so let's see. Uh, oh, is it the rubber duck debugging method? That might be it. Yeah, it basically just talk through your code, even if it's to the internet or to an inanimate thing, or maybe your cat or something, uh, you know. Although the cat wouldn't be useful because you're gonna talk to it and then it's just gonna run away. So <laughs> might not like what it sees. Uh, so, okay, I think that's it. So, uh, oh, someone mentioned they use their Teensy as a control alt delete. That's a good idea. Yeah, and you could use that with a keyboard library. And again, yeah, the Teensy board, again, the original Teensy, the, I think the Teensy 2.0 was the one. It has the same processor as Circuit Playground, the AT32U4. And then the Teensy 3 is a much cooler, faster processor, a little more expensive, but uh, you get a lot more uh, out of that processor. And I think that it can also act as a USB device, although I'm not totally sure, but check out all the Teensy info uh, and you'll see what you can do with that. So, okay, so I'll wrap it up. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. This was uh, Tony from Adafruit doing a little Circuit Playground example stream. So check out the uh, Circuit Playground library. And if you update it tomorrow, you should be able to see the Excel mouse demo and play around with it. 
Uh, but this is a little live stream I like to do. I like to do a bunch of live streams. Check out twitch.tv slash Adafruit. You can watch me stream these things live. I do a Monday and a Friday live stream. And then youtube.com slash Adafruit. That's where this will go up as an archive video with all kinds of other fun project videos and things. And also on Twitch, you know, we've got Lady Ada doing Desk of Lady Ada, Noah and Pedro doing Layer by Layer, and uh, check out Facebook Live. Basically, if there's a live video platform, uh, we're, we're going to be there and we're going to play with it and try it out. So check those out for all kinds of cool, fun content. And then programming notes. So this Friday, uh, you know, typically I do a Friday Pi live stream. I'm actually going to do it tomorrow on Thursday instead of Friday because this Friday, check out whitehouse.gov slash live at 1 p.m. Eastern, and you'll see the White House Champions of Change uh, uh, ceremony, I guess, uh, which you might see a familiar face there. So if you haven't read some of the news, uh, check out the Adafruit blog, and you can see that uh, Lady Ada was actually uh, awarded the White House Maker Champion of Change. So really cool honor uh, you know, for people that help contribute to the maker movement. So check that out. So I figured I, I shouldn't stream on top of that. <laughs> that would be a bad thing to do. Uh, so uh, I'm going to stream tomorrow. We'll do the next part in the Raspberry Pi SQLite sensor storage uh, stream. So tune in for that. Uh, otherwise, Tony from Adafruit. So like, comment, subscribe. Let us know that you're getting some good stuff out of these videos, and, and we'll keep doing them. So until then, I'll see you later. It's Tony from Adafruit.